G'day guys and gal, it's not the news flash of the day that Chaos and the Imperium don't like each other. The Imperium hates Chaos because they cause it to implode into a massive civil war that took it from being on the cusp of an eternal golden age to a shitty miserable existence. Chaos hates the Imperium because it hates itself but doesn't have the self-reflection abilities needed to not just blame everyone else for its own problems. However, Chaos still has a lot of warriors, some even honourable on its side. Some that recognise that despite the Imperium being their enemy, that doesn't have to mean that they despise them, with every fibre of their being and wish to desecrate all their corpses. There have been moments in the law when Chaos has even shown respect to the Emperor and his servants, which I'm keen to dive into for today's video. Before we get started, physical calendars are actually super handy to have. Whenever I'm getting overwhelmed by a busy month that has a lot of things going on from a lot of different sources, I can refocus and actually de-stress by writing it down and planning each day. I I've been using my 2024 Major Kill Nude Cosplay calendar a lot recently, and I'll be definitely using my 2025 Law Artwork calendar next year. With that said, yes, I am indeed selling a 2025 calendar. However, unlike last year, which had a lot of boobs and more so relied on your horniness to sell, this year I've had 12 amazing artworks commissioned, picking some of the best moments from Warhammer 40k's Law and using them as the image for each month. Get rid of those shitty stock art or grandma calendars. Get an insane Warhammer 40k Law calendar instead. With Christmas coming up, it also make an incredible gift to any of your 40k mates and as a special treat if we sell more law art calendars than we did the 2024 nude cosplay calendars i'll release a high budget nude sanguineous cosplay photo shoot that i've been sitting on for quite a while so basically you get rewarded with boobs for proving that you aren't just simping for boobs marketing baby link to the calendars is below get the a4 a3 or the a3 legendary edition today we'll go over the times that a servant of chaos has shown respect even begrudgingly to the imperium the emperor or a servant of the imperium oh uh, let's get into it it. To start off this list of rare and occasionally wholesome chaos to imperial respect, I want to give a moment from the law that really encapsulates what I'm talking about. In a modern setting, an ultramarine captain, at least I think it was an ultramarine, is making a last stand against a Death Guard force. His men are slain and he himself has reaped a mighty harvest of souls. The Death Guard commander approaches to slay the captain and is so impressed by his warrior spirit that even as he is fighting and beating the captain, the Death Guard says that he and his warriors will not be desecrated, nor their gene seed taken to make new plague marines. All of the fallen and would be buried with full honours, befitting their status. The captain doesn't reply, he just fights with everything he has left before he is finally slain. The Death Guard commander making good on his promise and burying the fallen loyalists as respected foes. For those that don't know much about the Death Guard, sure they look and smell like a bunch of rotten fucked up pieces of shit, and yes many of them are mean spirited and evil, with some just being Nurgleite zealots and all of them are weird, however many of them have actually maintained most of their sanity and are actually pretty chill. After all Nurgle is their patron god and he is the biggest chiller of them all. So there is actually a lot of in-law moments of Death Guard or Plague Marines just hanging out and being dudes. There was a decent bit of respect floating around during the Horus Heresy between the two sides since many of the trade legions hadn't been corrupted yet and were very much focused on their warrior spirits and whatnot. Many Marines knew each other and engaged in honourable duels mid-battle to the death. One example of this respect was between Argul Tal and Aquilon, the custodian. Even when Argul secretly became a traitor, he respected the shit out of Aquilon and was upset that he would eventually have to turn on him. That fateful day did come and it wasn't pretty with Aquilon and his men slaughtering a shitload of word bearers and their servants, including Argyll's close friend Cyrene. In a rage, Argyll hunted down Aquilon and they fought, spitting curses at each other, until Argyll slew his old friend. He still felt shit about it though, so in honour of Aquilon, he took his weapons and modified them to suit his own needs. There were many other instances of traitors fearing and respecting the custodies. Many of them hated them in a sort of like begrudgingly jealous respectful way, and many others were unsure about how they would fare against the custodies as they were rarely seen fighting. When the wordbearers turned on one of their custodian overseers early on pre-heresy, even stabbing him and impaling him, they were shocked that not only was he still alive despite being impaled, but he also was not begging or pleading. Even as his life pumped out of him, he stared at them with hatred in his eyes. The custodians also killed many trader marines in the webway, hence stories of their prowess have echoed through the ages, with many trader marines seeing the custodian guard as the boogeyman. Whenever a custodian is involved, the traders use as much overkill as possible, and often it doesn't work. During the heresy, a lot of traders talk shit about the emperor. Death to the false emperor or fuck that golden man in his shiny toilet were pretty common phrases. However, many others still showed him a lot of respect. Even though they were haters, they were still like, yeah, he could totally kick my ass. I'm only talking shit because I'm like 50 light years away from him right now. It was kind of like when you're a kid and you would do the Bloody Mary thing in the dark and then talk shit about Bloody Mary, but then you would feel this wave of fear grip you as if her very spirit was angry, so you would apologize and ask her not to kill you. I'm not sure if that was just me or everyone else did that, but yeah. The Emperor was kind of like that to the traitors. They all respect 
respected that he was insanely powerful, with a few even being, I don't hate the guy, I think he's pretty cool, but I'm just loyal to my Primarch, so cowabunga it is. Speaking more about the heresy, since this is when we got the most juicy traitor on Imperium action, a lot of commanders on both sides respected each other, but mostly those from the traitor sides to the Imperial side. See, as the traitors were, you know, traitors, the Imperial commanders lost most respect they used to have for them, but since the loyalists were loyal, they were a lot harder to hate on. So there was many times when a traitor Primarch or a traitor Space Marine captain was invading a system or taking on an enemy fleet, and they were like, ah, fuck, we're going up against Captain I Fuck Kids, a brutal and ruthless warlord that I once served with. This is going to be tough, guys. This man holds the world record for most amount of visits to Epstein's island within the span of three months. Just shit like that. The best example of this is when Abaddon and Sigismund came face to face post heresy. Sigismund was a legend, the greatest space marine warrior to ever live, having slain Khan and countless other traitor champions. Abaddon respected the shit out of him and tried to turn him to his cause, but Sigismund didn't have a bar of it and they fought. Abaddon remarked that even in Sigismund's old age, he hadn't become weak, he'd just gone from being so far above them that no one stood a chance to now he was just one of the best in the galaxy. Sigismund actually technically won the duel, landing a fatal blow on Abaddon, but plot harmer Tihi, a massive sword through the chest isn't apparently a death sentence for old Abaddon, who then proceeded to cut Sigismund in half. Even as he lay dying, Sigismund insulted Abaddon with his dying breath. Abaddon returned Sigismund's corpse, undefiled, to the Imperium as a sign of respect for the old warrior. Many, many traded marines are salty about how things turned out after the heresy and would likely, if given the choice, would have preferred the heresy to have never have happened. One example was Mercutian, a Night Lord who was a part of Talos's squad. When they were discussing the Great Crusade, Talos did the whole emo thing of, we were fighting for a lie, the heresy was justice, that kind of bullshit. Whereas Mercutian was like, well, I don't know man, the Great Crusade was a time of honor and glory, a united mankind dominating the galaxy, it was fucking awesome, I wish we kept doing that. Now Night Lords are less corrupt than most of the traders, however I can definitely imagine a number of uncorrupted Night Lords, Iron Warriors, Alpha Legionnaires, and maybe Thousand Sons who feel the same way. Life was way better before the heresy, and I can imagine many of them regretting the path they took. This next one isn't exactly traders showing respect to the Imperium, but I thought it was interesting regardless. An old Iron Warrior veteran, who had been fighting the Long War for 10 millennia, speaks with some new Chaos Marines, those that had been created well after the Horus Heresy, and he was shocked that they didn't really care too much about the Emperor or the Imperium, and had no wish to throw away their lives in the Long War. They didn't hold any personal grudge against an Emperor they never knew, and much preferred raiding supply lines, fighting other Chaos Warbands, uncovering ancient knowledge, and learning magic and shit. This infuriated the Iron Warrior, but it also makes sense. Joining Chaos was marketed as a path to freedom from the Imperium's Iron Fist. Why would they throw away their immortal lives getting blown up by an Imperial Titan for a cause they didn't really give a shit about? So yeah, not really showing respect to the Imperium, but it's interesting to see that there is a slow but steady shift away from the Long War. Another example of this is a renegade marine who joined the Death Guard and became a Plague Marine. His mutations aren't too bad at the moment, and he can still remove his helmet. He actually dreads becoming a full-on mutated Plague Marine. He didn't join the Death Guard out of some zealous desire to serve Nurgle, or some bone to pick with the Imperium. He did it because he wanted more power and he wanted to dominate the galaxy. He was actually even regretting choosing the Death Guard as his new legion due to how dogged and dedicated they were to the Long War. So just another example of how newer Chaos Marines don't actually care much about the Imperium and just want to do their own thing. This next one is kind of interesting, but I would say it still counts. The Core Knight Demon Kabunda has an eternal blood oath against the Blood Angels. He was the first demon to ever fight and nearly slay Sanguinius, and was then subsequently beaten by the Angel in their next two fights. As such, he has a special grudge against the Blood Angels. When the Tyranids attempted to destroy Baal and kill all Blood Angels, Kabunda was like, only I can beat their ass, and attempted to manifest on Baal so he could kill or corrupt the angels before the Tyranids could eat them. However, Mephitsen ensured Kabunda could not manifest close to the main Blood Angel force, so in frustration, Kabunda manifested elsewhere and killed a fuck ton of Tyranids, tipping the battle in the Blood Angels' favor and technically saving them, before building a mountain of Tyranid skulls so big that it could be seen from space. And of course, the symbol the skulls made was his own. So I wouldn't say he likes or respects the Blood Angels, but there is something to be said from someone who won't let anyone else kill them except themselves. Now for a bit of controversial lore. During the War of the Beast, an Imperial Fist successor chapter was fighting some Iron Warriors. However, an Orc army arrived so the two agreed to team up against them. They triumphed. However, the Black Templars arrived and ordered the Imperial Fist to kill their Iron Warrior compatriots. They refused, hence fought their fellow Sons of Dawn before escaping with the Iron Warriors and becoming Renegades. Obviously, you can see a lot of issues with this lore. However, it is a part of the lore and the Iron Warriors distinctly respected these Fists, even joining them and forming their own warband. 
Shit like this never happens anymore though, since it was pretty retarded. And finally, my favorite example goes against the fundamental laws of chaos. The fundamental law being that if you dabble in chaos, no matter how strong your will or how good your intentions, it will inevitably result in your corruption. It's been a massive theme and plot point in all of Warhammer, with even loyalist Primarchs needing to resist the temptation of using chaos artifacts. However, Inquisitor Eisenhorn didn't get the memo as this motherfucker uses a demon host, chaos sorcery, chaos weapons, and chaos artifacts without issue. Dude drank a poison that was designed to corrupt you to chaos and it just made him more overpowered and uncorrupted. As such, the servants of chaos look at Eisenhorn with absolute fear and awe. They're constantly either trying to corrupt or kill him due to him going against the rules. Anytime he comes face to face with one of his foes, they are like, dude, I respect the shit out of you, but now you need to die. And then Eisenhorn's like, no you, and he kills him instead. It's absolutely hilarious at this point and a great note to finish the video on. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a 2025 lore artwork calendar. There's no way you won't love it. We also have some more slots open for a pre-painted major mini, so check that out if you want a pre-painted major mini sent to your door. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.